Hey folks, I was asked by a couple of pals to do a video on flying the very large uh, RC aircraft that we fly under the AMA waivers of LMA1 and LMA2. So for me, the most successful way to have a large airplane that's really easy to get waivered is to build a light and strong uh, and a very common sense type airframe. Okay, so my MSL1 is about 90% balsa wood. I'm sorry, MSL2 is 90% balsa wood about uh, 6% plywood, and the rest is carbon fiber toe. And I used Monaco and wet sanded some parts of it so I could paint it to get the color on it. But essentially, folks, it's just one big light balsa wood airplane. And the thing is that common sense tells you it's not made for snap rolls. It's not made for 3D. It's made to fly like a full-scale airplane of this type of um, kind of design. Okay? Now, when you... Think of the systems, like the landing gears. Uh, you know, my landing gears have uh, brakes, independent brakes on each wheel. And I designed that and 3D printed them, put some aluminum in there uh, for places that might wear or need strength. And they work fabulously. They're really good. Another thing, if you're building a big airplane, is landing gear. I used 4130 chromoly steel, which was actually pretty light, thin-walled, and TIG-welded up my own landing gear. But when it comes to flying the airplane... There's a certain responsibility that you have in flying these giant airplanes, especially something that's 61 pounds and 188 inch wingspan. And it's not what most people think. Sure, you need to fly with common sense. You need to not fly toward the crowd and don't be silly. But what you need to consider is what I've done is checklist. I have a checklist that when I show up to the field, I check you know internal resistance and the basics of an electric airplane that I want to make sure it's not going to fall apart in the air. And then for each flight, and I know that looks like a big list on the right, but I have a lot of switches in the airplane I have to turn on. I have two uh, batteries for the receiver, two for the service uh, layout, and I have one for my fake exhaust system. So that's five switches i got to make sure are on. But then when it comes to flying this airplane, folks, um, it's just a common sense. It flies like a cub, and you don't want to do any like flying right at the crowd. You know, I used to do hammerheads and loops with this plane, but after putting a camera on the wingtip, the wings flex quite a bit. And it's got a big, heavy carbon fiber tube in the middle that I think is flexing some, but it may be my balsa wood and carbon fiber uh, spars that are actually giving a little bit. And I was afraid over time the epoxy and glue joints would start to fail and I might have a wing fail one day. So I quit doing the loops with the plane. But when you think of why do I have 2,000 successful flights between the MSL-1 and this aircraft here, the MSL-2, I think it's because of my checklist and just flying common sense in the air. And this plane's a lot easier to fly than a smaller airplane. So the big planes are easier to fly. They're easier to see. Uh, this plane does fly on the wing. And you better know how to use rudder. It's going to look silly in the air. But when it comes to uh, the responsibility you've got of having like... And just so you know, an LMA1 airplane means that it's under like 77 pounds and 7 ounces, I think it is. And you can inspect and certify it yourself, but you have to do two demo flights or three demo flights in front of a contest director. The LMA2 means that you need to have an AMA inspector inspect the airframe and the servos and the hinges and all that junk to make sure that it's flight worthy. And some people will go, well, you know, that's overreaching. You know, people are power hungry. Folks, we have a lot of responsibility flying in our national airspace that we keep the government off our back. You know, we want to be able to fly and not have people bitching at us about we're unsafe and all that stuff. And also, folks, one of the big things that people think about with these big airplanes is they're really dangerous. And I, to me, they're no dangerous. How do I say this? If I took my plane at 35 mile an hour, because its max speed is about 55, if I took this plane at 35 mile an hour, which is cruise speed, and flew it into you, you would probably be hurt worse than an EDF going 150 mile an hour and flying into you. Okay, so a light airplane can do just as much damage as a large airplane, but I believe it's also the perception that large airplanes can be dangerous. And we just don't want the feds, we don't want the public, we don't want all these people, all these Karens on our ass about flying our big airplanes. So that's one reason I have no problem conforming to all this stuff and, and flying by the rules. And you can see here, folks, I like to do touch and goes or one wheel touch and goes. And, you know, it's, it's just a docile, fun to fly airplane. Okay. And I get about a seven minute flight. I have 10 S2P with 5,200 packs, which gives me 10,400 milliamps. I do have telemetry. So in my ear, I can hear what my voltage of my, my battery, my flat packs are. 
And essentially, um, I get about a seven, seven and a half minute flight out of it. I still have enough power to do one go around. And remember, we never crash into the sky. We crash into the ground. So if, if it's too windy to fly, don't fly. And if you're in the air and you've botched your approach, then don't land. Go around. And you can see here with my approach, folks, I just I, I line up way out there. I come in, and I, it's just a very controlled landing. And I know people say my nose is too high, but the wing's designed to have a really, 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 uh, I mean, just a forgiving stall. If you want to know how that wing stalls, I did a video about it with yarn on the wing with a camera on the tail. But this wing is not stall-proof, but, man, it it is very forgiving when it stalls it mushes over it does not drop a wing you have to aggravate stall this airplane to get it to really drop a wing and i'm talking about getting up to like 45 or 50 degrees in the air which is probably like a 35 degree angle attack on that wing um but no folks i just wanted to do this video after having two or three people ask me about flying the big airplanes now here i like to show off i have my independent brakes you know lock up one wheel and we'll pivot and then i'll lock up the other wheel and pivot and um, I think this is one of the coolest things about the airplane. Rock on, folks. Please like and follow and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Rock on. Bye-bye.